Museum of Modern Art on the fourth floor, and we're standing in front of a little case that encloses Alberto Giacometti, the Swiss sculptor's city square from 1948. Strikingly odd in its materials, which are bronze and sort of heroic in, it, in its associations, and then these sort of very uh, small and meager, sad-looking figures. Right. Downstairs, you know, when you walk into the museum, you're confronted with the grand figure of Balzac by Rodin. And it's this gigantic, in bronze. In gigantic bronze that, as it's set up on the Boulevard Raspail in Paris, you know, it's something that you look up at, and it's heroic in the well, extreme. Then there's a whole tradition of equestrian of sculptures, and but you know, here we have these tiny little figures. They're and very weeny. So, there's such a great story behind this because what, what's happening here is that Giacometti, who had been one of these dissident surrealists before the Second World War, had fled, gone to visit his mother supposedly in, in Switzerland from friends when the Nazis were threatening, and stayed there for the duration of the war. And when he was there, he worked on his sculptures. And at the end of the war, he brought them all back. And he brought them back in tiny little match uh, boxes. Tiny little match boxes contained his entire output for the period of the <laughs> war. And these are figures that are even smaller than the ones that are in front of us here. Mm -hmm. They're these figures that are so minuscule, so tiny, that they seem like we could never get close to them. Mm -hmm. What's funny is that they, although they are so small and so devoid of information, really, about who they are and what, what they are in terms of their bodies, but I'm noticing that I can still see that there's a female figure and, and four male figures, and she is distinct. And, and that it's interesting because he's so reduced them, but that gender distinction is still there. And he does it through the hips and through the breasts. And, and the clothing. And, and the hair. Uh -huh. But also, and, what's, and if you're familiar with Giacometti's post-war work, you'll notice that his male figures are often walking. And the female figure is standing still. I noticed and that too. And her legs, she's almost like a, cor uh, a choroi. That is from right. uh, an ancient Greek figure where the legs are locked together. And right. the arms are um, also sort of plastered. An archaic plastered. Greek sculpture. That's right, plastered right. to the side. Whereas the men are, are mobile. And there's this very serious distinction. Yeah. that he makes in, yeah. the, in the representation of, of the genders. It work. bothers me. It bothers me, too. It she makes me wonder what he is means, well, and I worry bound. that he means something that is not going to make me happy. No, I suspect <laughs> that that's exactly right, in fact. Um, she seems bound, doesn't right. she? Right, there's, this, there's a, sense of, a sense of, you know, men's mobility in the city and her lack of mobility in the city. I mean, it's hard to say that because all of the figures are alienated. They you know, are. And alone and isolated. And she is too, but she's more so. Yeah. Well, think about his earlier representations of women. I'm thinking most famously, of course, of woman with her throat cut, where we have this figure that seems as if she had been raped and then murdered, splayed sort of her limbs akimbo uh, on the floor. Mm -hmm. Although, even then, there's even sort of greater violence because she's not only been attacked, clearly, but she's also half insect. Um, most specifically, uh, praying mantis-like. Ah, someone who would kill her mate, right? Yeah, one of the ideas that was of particular interest to the Surrealists. Yeah, I mean, she looks like she's, she's standing still and sort of, therefore, a, a, a waiting victim, somehow, to these men who walk by her to me. You wonder whether or not these figures will sort of come into contact with each other, or if, in, if this was somehow animated, if they would pass th across each other's paths so that they don't actually ever bump, but intersect only. It's, a, it's an interesting community of isolation, isn't it? <laughs> you know what it really reminds me of? It really reminds me of Surat. Ah, I think that that's right. Because the figures are reduced to, to sort of their bare essentials, and yet you can still tell some things about them. And they're very isolated in their sort of performance and in the, out, in the outside Space. The, the French philosopher Sartre wrote the introduction to Giacometti's first major post-war exhibition. And one of the things that Sartre wrote about was the way in which Giacometti's figures represented distance and the reclaiming of the isolation of the figure in the wake of 
of the concentration camps in the wake of the uh, of the camp that actually Sartre himself apparently was in briefly, um, where figures were constantly against each other, ah. and that one of the things and had and and that all sort of personal That's space or isolation was removed. That's so that right, and the body became the something body that was that bodies you, were very contiguous, affecting each other that's in right. a way. That's right, and that right. You, he said that for weeks on end you always had somebody's thigh yes. or arm against yes. you, yes. and that Giacometti is reclaiming that distance, right. and therefore the that's autonomy and possibility of action in space. But of course, that has an especially potent meaning if the female figure doesn't have that ability right. to act. You know, that reminded me of uh, the description in Mouse of uh, his father when he has to go to the toilet in the middle of the night, and I think he's in Dachau. And in order to go to the toilet, he has to step over bodies. Now, Sartre was not in a, in a concentration camp in Germany, but he was apparently uh, in prison briefly, at least. It's funny because it looks like such a dystopic view of humanity, but seen in that context, it's more utopian. I'm not sure that there's that necessarily that much sort of positive light here, but I think a sort of complexity of different kinds of negative. Fair enough.